Hi folks, I'm Marcel back with The Pulse. Recently, the FDA wrote another couple letters stating again that NMN, they're standing by their decision right now, that NMN should not be considered a dietary uh, supplement, excluded from the definition. Um, I'm going to talk today about some reasons why I believe the FDA is going to lose this battle over NMN. One of the big heroes for NMN and supplements in general right now is Dan Fabricant, whom Time Magazine once called the king of natural foods. He's right now the president of NPA, which is the Natural Products Association. He's a former director of dietary supplement programs at the FDA, and he's been front and center in this debate over NMN. He's, he's the guy who stood up for NAC and threatened legal action against the FDA if they proceeded on their ban of NAC. And he's compared the NMN situation to the NAC situation many times. I believe that Dan's got some great arguments. I want to list some quotes. But first, I want to talk for a moment about the state of the FDA when it comes to foods. Politico published an article last April. Basically, it was the result of an investigation where they interviewed, and it's a very long article. Link is going to be in the description. I would love for you guys to read it if you're curious about the FDA and where they stand right now with food. Basically, they're completely dysfunctional when it comes to regulation of the food supply. Many horrific examples, recent examples, with baby formula containing lead, with uh, aggregational water con containing E. coli, just many, many things that they're just not doing. They're not doing their job at all. In fact, they interviewed 50 present-day and past uh, officials at the FDA, and Politico said there is a remarkable level of consensus that the agency is simply not working. Current and former officials and industry professionals use terms like ridiculous, impossible, broken, Byzantine, and a joke to describe the state of food regulations at FDA. So when I've talked about the FDA, I've kind of described them in these terms. So to see now others speaking and have been speaking out long before I did uh, against the FDA and their treatment of foods, just set supplements aside for a moment and think of how they're not even uh, doing their job regulating the food supply. A former White House official, director of nutrition, Sam Cass, said, there's a real need in this country to put pressure and regulatory oversight on an industry that's producing food that's undermining the public good. Now think about that. Let that sink in for a moment. The food supply in the United States is undermining the good of its citizens. That's how bad things are. So the FDA has taken some recent action. They requested a study done and a proposal from a foundation called the Reagan Udall Foundation. And it, they came back with a 38-page report on how the FDA might reform uh, the food programs that they oversee. An interesting thing happened here. There's not a single mention of dietary supplements anywhere in this report. Now, did the FDA neglect to even ask about oversight of dietary supplements, or are they just continuing a trend of ignoring dietary supplements and dietary supplement companies? This seems to be ongoing in many facets where the FDA is enforcement discretion, when they don't even respond to NDIs or new dietary ingredient requests. There were five of them for NMN sent from 2020 to 2022, and they did acknowledge receiving at least one of them, but they didn't even answer anything about mentioning that this molecule was actually a drug that MBI was already uh, issuing a, a patent or a trademark uh, restriction on. So they were not even responding. They're, again, pretending that dietary supplements don't even exist, ignoring the industry. Dan Fabricant said, when it comes to dietary supplements and foods, FDA is dug in on an adversarial strategy, whereas with pharmaceuticals, the agency clearly sees them as a customer and behaves with trusting and cooperative postures. Again, this is a former official of the FDA. He goes on to say, instead of focusing its limited resources on firms who are intentionally adultering or misbranding products, FDA is making matters difficult 
for rule followers who have submitted an NDI notification or conducted a self-GRASS evaluation. Now, what he's talking about and referring to there is the DSHEA, the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994, which again, now this was a congressional act that told the FDA to regulate fake supplements like fake NMN. So companies like Amazon should be pursued by the letter of the law for selling these fake supplements. Why are they getting away with it? Again, the FDA is ignoring the existence of not just supplements and not just the whole billion dollar supplement industry, but they're ignoring that there are fakes that they've been assigned. They've been told they must regulate these fakes. They must take action and they're not doing it. The FDA's view is that their job is to limit the entry of novel ingredients to the food and dietary supplement marketplace. As we did on NAC, we will leave no stone unturned in finding a solution to ensure a safe and vibrant marketplace. Now listen to this. Americans who want access to and want to develop innovative health and wellness products shouldn't be treated like a second-class citizen by the FDA. If you're a supplement company, you're a second-class citizen. The FDA treats the drug companies with respect. What was the word he used? Cooperative postures. But we don't even get acknowledged. In a 38-page report, they're not even going for the low-hanging fruit with supplements. They're not promoting any supplements. They're not promoting a nutritional diet. They're not promoting safe foods. They're basically doing nothing. Now, they say they don't have the budget to do anything, which is a reason I don't think they're going to be able to fight off these challenges to oversight of NMN, to basically making NMN a drug. But it's very interesting when you look at it that they're not just protecting the drug industries uh, against these debated NAC, NR, CBD, NMN. They are laying the groundwork to repeat this process over and over and over again with many, many other dietary supplements by ignoring their responsibilities issued to them by Congress and by ignoring the NDIs that have been legally submitted to them and by ignoring the dietary supplement industry with a new report that they funded, a 38-page report that gives them guidance on how to, to basically reform how they treat foods, they began ignored supplements. So you're not supposed to take NMN. You're not supposed to take fish oil. You're not supposed to take supplements. You're not supposed to get safe food, and you're not supposed to get nutritional food. If you think about it for a moment, the food supply is unsafe. We're not getting enough nutrients. And now we're being hindered when we try to enhance our food supply with dietary supplements. Things like vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients that we're just not getting enough from in our food supply. And now the FDA is hampering our efforts to do that. Hampering the dietary supplement industry and hampering the public from getting nutrients that they, that they want to take with their diet. That they feel better taking from their diet. And God forbid they may take less drugs because they're getting nutritional value from their food supply. Dan Fabricant and his success so far with NAC fighting off the, the FDA on this, um, that's one big reason I think the FDA is going to lose. But I have a couple other reasons I want to go ahead and mention as well. I spoke with a CEO of a very large supplement company recently, and he said, you know, this is not so different from Chromadex suing Elysium over NR, NR which they had control over. They had a, a patent over. And they said, look, um, you can't sell this. We own NR. Nobody else can sell this. And a judge overturned this. Why? He said NR is a natural occurring molecule. You can't own it. Now, if that happened with NR, don't you think it's very likely the same thing? If we go to court again with Metro Biotech suing whomever, don't you think we can see a repeat of another judge saying, What's so different from NMN and NR? It's the same thing. It's a natural occurring molecule. Uh, you can't own it. And then the third possibility, which is also right now valid, um, the same CEO told me there are many forms of NMN. They're only talking about the beta form of NMN, which is a crystallized form, which I take, many people take, but it's not the only one on the market. NMN is available in many different forms. And this CEO said, look, we're developing new forms of NMN. 
they're only going to stop one form. If they're even successful at this, they're going to stop one form of NMN. They're going to own one form that'll turn into the drug form. Um, there's still going to be NMN in many different forms on the market that they haven't even written any letters about that already exist in the food supply that they really can't turn back the clock on. I'm doubtful any of this is going to go forward, but I'm very grateful for the research done, the investigation work done by Politico, and also and especially the recent work done by Dan Fabricant to fight for the dietary supplement industry and to fight for your right to take the supplements that you want to take. Keep watching. I'll be back again soon.